Now, News Talk Radio CJAD 800 gives you Open Mic Night. Radio. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so you're listening to Open Mic Night. Uh, right here on, on CJD. 800. Yes. I'm Clove. And I am Shirley. And we are from the Chonula.com podcast. Yes, sir. And we're trying ourselves out on the radio. Yes. All I'm, right. Yes. Been freaking out for the past week. Freaking out. So far, so good. Mm-hmm. My head is still here. <laughs> I don't know where the rest of my body is at. I can't even think right now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be fun, you know, Usher. Actually, he's here. In Montreal? Yes. Okay. Uh, concert's going on. It's probably still going on tonight at the Bell Center. Um, I wish I would have seen this concert, but I'm happy to be here, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing, baby? I'm doing all right. Trying to get through these nerves and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, so far, so good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. We had fun last night, Halloween with the kiddos. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> first year. Actually, it was the first year where we went trick-or-treating early. Yeah, and the girls were actually really into it. You yeah. know, like, we didn't have to force them to go to the door. We didn't have to say, it's okay, it's okay. They just, like, they were running from door to door. We didn't have to pimp them to different houses, like, come on, more yeah. candies. Yeah, act cute. <laughs> <laughs> we need some for the whole year. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I, the, I guess the tip is make sure that you have they're friends with them because that just motivates them to just keep trick-or-treating oh and our youngest lost her mind when she found out that there was other kids there from her school <laughs> all the kids were oh my god they're, like, oh they're my from god. our school i know you they're from our school we're trick-or-treating together <laughs> this is awesome this is amazing. kids running left and right on the road yeah the oldest didn't want to go trick-or-treating though he was too cool for school yeah yeah that's the first that's yeah yeah he's like whatever it was kind of sad for me. He had a really nice Slenderman outfit, too. Yes, he freaked yeah. me out, actually, in the car. <laughs> I was on my way. I dropped off the girls, and I forgot that he was waiting for me in the car because he got to school late. It was kind of a rough morning. Yeah. And uh, so so as I'm walking back to the car, I com- like I said, I completely forgot he was in there. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, what the heck? <laughs> And there was a gentleman that was right behind me, and he looked at the car like, yeah. what is going on? Speaking of scary, mm. your mother, well, my mother-in-law, your yeah. mom she, is in town. She might be listening. That's okay. <laughs> she knows how scary she is. She likes that. No. <laughs> she, she likes knowing that she's scary. <laughs> my mom likes to visit without warn, like just short warning. Mm-hmm. And for me, whether it's my mom, oh, you know what? And depending how fast you drop everything, that's how much you love her. Yeah, right? I know, right? No, but uh, speaking of my mom, <laughs> my phone was buzzing home. We love you, Mercia. Yeah. Right. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of unexpected visitors. Please call me ahead when you do that. I know, Mom, I love you. Yeah. But I, I do, I it just it's easier for me to just plan everything. I think that's a common courtesy thing. Most importantly, right? why I say that is just give me time to organize my home because it's always a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> but know? there's a little bit of a relief, though, when they show up and you didn't have time to do that. They just have to accept it as it is, right? Yeah. So yeah. It's like, all right. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, true. Plus, you know what? It's bonus for us. Mm-hmm. We're doing this. We didn't have a babysitter, and we got a babysitter now. Win-win. The universe is working in our favors. Mm-hmm. The whole week, I didn't think it was working in our favor because everything was just going not right. Oh, my God. I'm surprised we didn't get pulled over by the police. I'm surprised. Like, okay, why a whole would bunch you say that? I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> I wouldn't have been surprised if it happened. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Well, any, anywho. But I'm, yeah, oh, my mom. I, and, you know, she makes me run around everywhere. I have to, like, you know, because she, she, she goes to Haiti. She's getting older. My mom's 70-something years old now. Mm-hmm. But looking like she's 50. <laughs> she looks to, good. Yeah, she does. She's got a lot of energy. But, I, you know, she, she gets all this stuff from Montreal and from Toronto because she has to send all these things to Haiti. Like, she brings toothpaste. Yeah, and, she's on that hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she has she sends it by cargo. And so, yeah, so I run around with her trying to find, like, okay, Shirley, we got to head off Super C. I need tomato sauce. Like, she's, oh, doing really? like, she's doing, like, mass shopping yeah. when she comes and visits, too, right? Yeah, y- yeah. yeah. you got to gas up the car. 
Yeah. Get ready to do the uh, the 500 run yeah. around the city yeah. to find the best deals. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, you know, car's kind of uh, a little rough. I was like, Mom, I don't think I could do the... <laughs> The driving you 500, you know, I can't do the F1. The Montreal 500. No, I can't. The car, I don't know if the car can take it. Mm, so I said, mm. okay, you're going to have to. I called my brother at the last minute and said, hey, you got a little money. Maybe you and I can pull in some money together so she could take a cab and see her guy that where she drops off the cargo and everything. Right, right. So, uh, so I'm like, yeah, uh, brother, let's let's pull in together some money because mm -hmm. let's I can't... work together to yeah. navigate let's this, let's uh... have the cab be the f1 driver <laughs> to haiti you know plan let's pay somebody else to take care of this yeah yeah <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. exactly but other than that i'm i'm happy to be here i can't believe we're here i know it's crazy i we... can't believe these mics are on i know right <laughs> well we've been we've been doing this for the past four years we have a podcast called chonilla Mm -hmm. And it's basically about our lives. It's a it's a personal comedy pod podcast about our lives. You know what makes us th tick, what we think, our we share about our past, our future, mm -hmm. um, and then you just sandwich it with you know some current news and everything else in between. So well, I was just saying to Stephanie that you had a background in broadcasting. Yep. And I was looking to do my own memoirs, right? Mm -hmm. So we just kind of and then you discovered podcasting. We just kind of slammed that together and made a comedy journal. Yeah, yeah. Bam. Yeah. Thanks so. Yeah. Thank goodness, <laughs> the universe was ha was uh, looking down upon me, and I won mm. an iPod, and that's how I discovered about podcasting because I had no clue what it was. Mm -hmm. and, and what was the first podcast you listened to? It was a show called uh, Keith and the Girl, mm -hmm. and I just loved. I listened to many, but this one really uh, was really intriguing to me because they were hilarious. Mm -hmm. But they would share things that are really personal, yeah. you know, from yeah. their love life, uh, what they feel about their, you know, their family, what they've gone through. And that was shocking to me. Yeah. Even when they were having like internal conflict, internal relationship conflict. Oh, my God. They would still go in there. Right. Yeah. And we kind of do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I know sometimes people have said to us, TMI, <laughs> too much information. <laughs> That's okay. That yeah. just means we're talking about stuff we need to talk about. It, well, yeah. exactly. And then sometimes, like, I, it's, you know, it's we're adults. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's yeah. okay. And the podcast is an adult podcast. I mean, like, we swear on it and stuff like that. And yes. That's going to be the hardest part for me tonight. This is the biggest struggle ever. It's to, not, it's to not go to the dump button and just get rid of those last eight seconds. You know, I'm in the car and I said all the words. <laughs> just get them all out. Just to get it out of my system. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then I, when we came here, I, I said one word. I'm like, I don't even know if I could say that. Yeah, so that that is the biggest struggle. All right. Yeah, but anywho. It'll be fun. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. It will be. But uh, what do we have? We have so many things that, that we're going to be talking about from spanking, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, particularly inspired from a show called Blackish, which I love, love very much. But let's go find out what's going on on the road with Mr. Chris Watt Reiser. This is Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Britain's mm -hmm. strongest team, when you're the one they all call. Feel song. You know, she, I was talking to, to Rhea about this song, and um, she was saying that this song makes her think about her mom mm. and how strong she had to be. Welcome back to Open Mic Night on CJAD 800 with uh, myself, Clove, and Shirley from the Chonilla.com podcast. Yes! Whoop, whoop. Excited to be here! And that was the Rhea Reese band. Yes. With our good friend uh, Rhea. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And Andre. Um, so, you know the show Blackish? Yes. I love this show. I am a fan as well. It makes me think of the vibe of Cosby and the different world. And it's nice to modern see. Modern Family. Yeah. Mix, yes. You're welcome. Yes, with Modern Family as well. <laughs> and I'm really glad, at, you know, during the season so early that they talk about spanking. So they have this. Uh, <laughs> You know that's that's funny that you mentioned that because that that's usually a topic that's avoided yeah. on shows. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. So so early on, there's a cool clip actually. Um, 
there's a cool clip. Andrew where... the Octopride yes. will uh, cue that up. Yeah. Where you'll hear this. <laughs> this is very funny. <laughs> beginning. If you can't cue it up, do you want to just describe it? Oh, uh, basically, at the beginning of the of the show, you hear the the mom is just freaking out at the store. She's mm-hmm. like, "Where are you? Mm-hmm. Where are you? I can't, you know." And as she's freaking out, at she's the, inside a department store. Yes, yeah, she's inside a department store, and uh, she's just she can't find her son, and he's kind of uh, uh, doing uh, like you know where a he's, hiding game. Yeah, he's yeah. hiding in in the clothes. Mm-hmm. And I could so relate in that moment because that happened to me mm-hmm. with our girls at Sears. Okay. And both girls. Thought it would be funny? Yeah, I thought it'd be hilarious to hide from mommy and just be inside the circle of clothes. <laughs> so I'm like, my heart's pumping. I'm going crazy. Yeah. And your your brain usually goes to the worst case scenario All the time. right away. All the time. Yeah. Like they're, they're adorable. It's so funny, too, because she pointed out in, in, in the show, like, he's adorable. And, of course, it's about to happen that somebody's about to take him. Right. <laughs> so everything right. she's saying, I felt like, oh, my God, they're so cute. So <laughs> for sure, I'd want to grab him, too. <laughs> like, all this stuff. Snatch. You know? And then, uh, <laughs> so, so she's freaking out. And I. I felt I freaked out at the store. I didn't care who saw me. I was like, I was, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Anytime, anytime. You'll hear the clip. Jack, Jack, where are you, Jack? <laughs> Not her. Oh my God, you guys! My son is gone. He's been kidnapped. He's little. He's black. He's really cute. Who wouldn't kidnap him? It was only a matter of time. Ma'am, He's very small. Ma'am, calm down. Just calm down. Listen to me. I'm gonna fast forward through what my wife said to Officer Hernandez. It doesn't show her in the most flattering light. But I think it's a good reminder to all of us that you never tell a frantic black woman to calm down. Very true. Oh, what are you doing? Go! Oh, Go! Yes, ma'am. Jack! Jack, where are you? Oh, God! Jack! Remember the ass I mentioned earlier? Here he is, our son. Mommy loves you! Oh, God! He'd hidden again. It was a game to him. A game we all hated called Jack's Missing and maybe in a white van with no windows. Mm-hmm. I found him. He's okay. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Everyone's okay. Whew. I love a happy ending. Were you hiding? Were you hiding in there? You scared the hell out of me. Did you not hear me calling your name? I'm going to go ahead and fast forward again because I don't think you can say these things to a child. When we get home, your father is going to spank you. Did you hear what she just said? Let me play it back to you. When we get home, your father is going to spank you. Let's go. Can you believe her? She got to be judge, jury, and made me executioner. Not cool, Bo. Not cool. Oh, my God. So, yeah. So, So, yeah, I... She handled it, I think, pretty well. She, <laughs> and she's I think, freaking. Yeah, but I think in the show, she actually two hands him. You know what I mean? Once she's done hugging him, mm, yeah. she just two hands him like a way, like I push. did. It, I did the exact same thing <laughs> it, I, at Sears. I was so happy to see the girls. And then I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Do you understand that you just almost gave me a heart attack? Yeah, you still think this is funny. And you think it's funny? funny? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, this is it. That's it. We're leaving. We're going home. And I'm. Did any other parents give you a high five? No, no, but they're just kind of looking around like, ooh. I can talk to my kids like that? <laughs> <laughs> I guess some moms yeah. thought that. <laughs> like, ooh, I need some, is there a note? I need some a oh, pen and is, paper. That I is need, clearly okay. not positive reinforcement. Oh, <laughs> terrible. Or some said, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you talk to your kids like I that. I love seeing parents be parents. Yeah, oh, oh, I do, it's, too. It's the best. When I see that. I'm like, I don't have to worry about your kids when they're teenagers. Thank you. Yeah, you know how there's foot, you know, basketball, football. You don't need cheerleaders for that. Mm-mm. Parents who 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 checks their kids in public. Yeah. You need a cheer cheerleader for that. Like I want to just tap them on the on the shoulder and say good job or just you know what I mean. Way to go. Like way to go. Mm-hmm. Creating less jerks in the world. That's right. I agree. <laughs> you know, and so um, oh my gosh, I I I couldn't do the spanking with with the girls because. We've done this. I've done the spanking. Uh, you know, we have three kids. I spanked Ronan one time. 
Was it you who did it or I, I did, did it? I, I did. No, I think I did it. Oh, I did it too. You did? Mm -hmm. And it was the worst feeling in the world. I worst. couldn't mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. Like we did it and I thought this is for your own good. Mm -hmm. I believe I did it because he he took something at the at the Dipana. Mm -hmm. And so but he didn't he didn't know and I and I was like, No, no, you do not steal. And I, I said You start punching him in the face. No, honey. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> I told him like, okay, this is this is a cause for spanking because you should not steal. Were you that rational when you said it though? It's part of the commandment, so okay. I have to spank. Okay. That's what I thought to myself. <laughs> All right. Thou shalt spank your children. But when I did it, it just it didn't feel good. It was the first and the last time that I did it mm -hmm. because I grew I grew up with that. I grew up where where my parents were spanking me and my brother. Mm -hmm. Not around twelve, thirteen ish, they stopped, mm -hmm. and um, and. I know there was a period, I, I swear, bet between 8 to 10 years old, I felt like I was getting the spanking every single day. I was like, what? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, what am I doing? Like, why Your mom was probably going through some stuff. No. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Angry inside. No, <laughs> Come here, Shirley. <laughs> my boss didn't give me my cut. <laughs> spanking time. Yeah, I'm going to take it out on Shirley's butt. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I... I just automatically thought, well, it happened with my with me. I grew mm -hmm. up with that. Mm -hmm. I turned out fine. You know, I'm I'm not in jail. I was I didn't get pregnant at fourteen, sixteen. Not that it is no I, who <laughs> You're not supposed to do You're not those supposed things. To, right. I'm just saying. Uh so I'm thinking all these things and, and um but yeah, when in the middle of doing that with Ronan, it just I tried to really push myself to think this in the middle of it, this is for his own good. This is for his own good. He's right. going to learn. But, yeah, and there's some parents out there that are real advocates yeah. of that. You know, real advocates of the corporal punishment. Yeah. So, I mean, like, what, what, what would you say to that? I mean, because, like, we're taking both the stance. Like, we both agree. For us. That, for, yeah. That, yeah, spanking is just not for us. Yeah. yeah. So, but there's parents out there who are like, you know, no, this is, you have to do this. You have to discipline this way. But it's kind of funny. It's kind of tricky for me. Mm -hmm. Because I could see... If it was something extreme, extreme, right, I might lean to do it. Right. And even if my kid's going to be 25 years old. What if they hacked your Facebook? Who, the kids? Yeah. Is uh, that cause for spanking? No, it's not no. cause for spanking, no. But if they bully someone really badly right, to the point that it makes a kid feel like they, they won't go to school or things like that, mm -hmm. oh, no. We might have to consider that. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm saying it. Yep, I said it. Well, I'll tell you right now <laughs> that I won't be doing any spanking. Yeah. There's no way. Because when I spanked our oldest son, I yeah. think, man, I think he was, geez, six, seven at the time. And, there, and the only thing that kept going through my head is that there's a serious weight class difference here. You yeah. I mean, this is, this no is not cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I also started to feel that, you know, there's something I missed out on the front end that caused this, you know, I should have been able to prevent this from happening. Mm -hmm. Not only his behavior, but my behavior as well when it came to the spanking. Did you ever get spanked? Uh, yeah, I did. When you were a kid? Yeah, but it wasn't by my parents. It was by this dude that was babysitting me. <laughs> what? Yeah. What yeah, you... he had a family of like eight kids who lived in like a townhouse. It was here in Montreal. What? Yeah. It was up in uh, Pointe aux Trembles. What happened? What did you do? I, well, basically what would happen is when the kids would get out of pocket, he would line them all up. And then he would just start spanking. He would just start like, okay, everybody, everybody's taking a turn. And then he warned me one night. He said, you know, the next time you were you're visiting, here, like you were visiting, it was, was being, a friend? I was being babysat. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay, right. And he said, next time you're babysat here and this happens, you're totally lining up with the other kids. Really? Oh, and he hauled off on me. Oh, my God. What do you mean? Yeah, because, well, I'd never been spanked before. You know what I mean? So I was like, it's like what, what's going on here? I don't understand. Is this going to hurt? Oh, my God. What did he use his hand? I could feel my teeth rattling. I could feel like it, like yeah. Because yeah. you're scared. Yeah, I had to. Pull, it's creepy. I had to pull pull down my pants. That's weird. And yeah, it was like right on my bare backside. It was terrible. That's weird. Yeah. My parents never did that. Yeah, <laughs> I told my mom about it. I never went back to that place. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, with me, um, I I I didn't get the bear. It's funny. I'm thinking that's weird. You got the bare hand. I got the belt. <laughs> like really <laughs> the belt is for real like mm. yeah some kids has i've i've heard stories you're allowed to run yeah from the belt from what i understand yeah yeah and uh, yeah i used to hide the belts from my parents i would hide all the leather belts so they have the really soft 
the disgusting belts. All right, hold that thought. Let's see what's going on in these Montreal streets with Chris Reiser. You're listening to Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Welcome back to CJD 800. I'm your hostess with the most is Shirley. And I'm Clove from the Chonilla.com podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a guest tonight, mm -hmm. not on our own. She is a teacher, writer, and part-time comedian who has performed at numerous comedy clubs around Montreal and beyond. And beyond, 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 beyond. Thanks for the echo, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> and, welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. Uh, uh, November 2011, she founded Love to Laugh Montreal. It's a group of volunteer stand-up comedians. She also writes for the Montreal Examiner, Examiner, and she shares news, reviews, and profiles, dynamic Montreal uh, comedy scene that's going on. Let's welcome Stephanie Ian. Yeah! Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm great. Yes. I was listening to your conversation, it, and uh, I don't mind a little spanking now yeah. and then. Okay. Yeah. And I don't have children, so no. <laughs> I'm, just, 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 I'm just putting it out there in yeah. the universe. <laughs> you just like seeing the discipline happen, right? Yeah, listen, yeah. you know, a little. Yeah. 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 Have you been, did you grow up where your parents, did they do the spanking or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was um, very strict, you know? Yeah. And as a kid, you kind of don't really get it. I don't think it's really effective. I was a, a preschool teacher mm. and an elementary school teacher. And, you know, teachers don't spank, right? right so we right. have other ways. And you can kind of get around it. And uh, But I was never able to intimidate a child, ever. Really? I just mm -hmm. never had it in me. They'd look, well, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, okay. They see right me. through me. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. I it's it's tough. I don't know. Did and uh, I, spanking. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> um. And and so you you were. How did you fall from teacher? Like you were a teacher to comedy. Well, I love to write. I've always been a writer since I was a kid. I used to write short stories and stuff like that. And I used to take. Um, News pictures and things like that, or 17, 16 magazine, you know, the, the uh, Tiger yeah. Beat and all right, that. Right, yeah. right. And I would write my own captions. And I always had, like, cartoons and things like that that I loved to do. So I always loved that stuff. Comedy was always a big thing for me. So you're doing memes before memes existed. Yeah. Oh, all the time. And I would pass them out. I only have one that I saved from when I was a kid, but I made, like, hundreds of them and gave them out at school to my friends. Nice. And it was really fun, you know? Nice. And I wanted to be a cartoonist. That was my goal. Yeah. And my background is in art. And... Um, Three years ago, I took a stand-up comedy class with Joey Elias. Yeah, he's a show right here. That's Shout right. Out. He's, mm. he's awesome. And so I figured I'd do it once and cross it off my bucket list and just kept going. It's There's something so empowering. I think everybody, every woman especially, should try it. Mm -hmm. I heard about that. Yeah, like we, sorry, go ahead. It's like all your fears rolled up into one. You're standing on a stage. People are judging you. Mm. By the way you look, by the shoes you're wearing, mm -hmm. they're looking at you and... To win them over is really special, and mm -hmm. it means revealing yourself, and we're always scared to do that. Everybody is. Mm -hmm. uh, like you do in your podcast, you know, you're very open, and that's that's what people connect with. That's mm -hmm. what's so special. Do you think that when you do that and when you uh, reveal a little, bit, a little bit of yourself at a time on stage, is that something that where the audience can kind of take that and kind of cut away all that nervousness? Because I know that when you're on stage, and if you're nervous on stage, the audience will feel bad for you in a sense. Absolutely. You have to really own it. You mm. have to get up there like you are so full of, you know, everything, full of energy. And for women, it's especially hard because we're yeah. used to minimizing. We're used to, oh, no, not me. And even in <laughs> Look class, over there. you yeah. know, the class count clown is usually a guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, and the girls are not used to having that center stage and unless we're doing it because of our looks. You yeah. know, if you're the pretty one and I never was. So I learned to have a sense of humor really young. And <laughs> it's uh, as I've gotten older, I'm really happy about that because some of the beauties are really feeling it as they're getting older. They're starting with the Botox and the Schmotox. And the, right. You know, they're yeah. panicking. But if you value something in yourself, like humor, that never gets old, it will always, I mean, you, your sense of self is really strong. That's much true. stronger. That's true. Very, very true. And we should be encouraging more little girls to, to feel that way about themselves and to value all their qualities, all their talents, you know? Yeah, and because and, I definitely come from having a huge fear of public speaking. Deathly 
fear of well, it's public like speaking. It's like the number one or number two fear in the yeah. whole world, like yeah. out of everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'll have uh, a thing at our place where we have like the family movie night. Yeah. And we definitely promote that our kids introduce the movie <laughs> when it's about to start, especially if they've seen it before, because then they like to say, it's a story about her, it's a story about this, and stuff like that. <laughs> it's really cool. It's true. Our kids have no stage fright. Like, it's. It blows my mind. <laughs> it blows true. my mind. It's true. That's why it tells me it's got to be taught. Yeah, stage but, you know, has every to be kid taught. now has a, you know their own phone or their own iPad or whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody is broadcasting. Everybody is recording. Yeah, they don't have any hesitancy. You know, to have their picture taken or anything. It's it's right. amazing to me, and I see that in the younger comics because I'm not a younger comic, but when I see some of the twenty somethings get up on stage, they own it, and they're I realize that they've been in front of a camera their whole life. Right, mm, they've had true. their video cameras and every all the way through. So. Mm -hmm. um, but, mm. but to reveal yourself, like some people do it really naturally. For me, it took a while. Mm -hmm. And as, especially in the last couple of years, I've had some really rough times and I've been taking much more personal stuff and feeling much stronger on stage because of it. Because I'm really being genuine, you know? <laughs> you, I, you, sorry. It's okay, go ahead. You mentioned a much more personal stuff. Have you sometimes where you feel compelled to write down something in terms of making it funny but then you question like oh maybe it's a little too much of myself that i'm putting out there i mean i know I, it's happened with with us on the podcast and everything but have you ever found yourself where you, did you I ever don't... regret saying anything on yeah. stage no, no no but it took me a while because um like after my mom passed away last year mm. i actually took joey's class again because i lost my funny you know mm. you just kind of burn out and you just even though all the way through I was finding things that were funny, I couldn't feel, see myself getting in front of a stage again. Right. So I took his class and I did a whole five minute set about the funeral, about like all this oh, stuff. Wow. And I did, it was funny. And I, I got, it was, I got really good reactions from people. And they said, you know, I can really relate to that. Or, you know, they, they saw that I was, um, that I had sort of, found the place where I was really comfortable with it and mm -hmm. it, it did me such good and even recently I've I've gone through some stuff and I, I keep writing that's mm -hmm. just what I do mm -hmm. and it's wonderful we were uh, speaking to uh, Wob Canoe on the podcast one yeah. time and I mentioned that whole public speaking thing because mm -hmm. he is amazing at public speaking he is it's incredible man. yeah like it's like he was born with it and he said that um, all you got to do is end it with a joke about the local hockey team or just root the local <laughs> hockey team, and then everybody cheers. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, the same way that you're saying our kids, you know, we, they just go in front and introduce the movie, but his his father did the same thing for him, you know, mm -hmm. because his, mm -hmm. and so he would take him to public places and just say, okay, just go on stage and introduce it, yeah. me or Make introduce Make a joke this. about Mario Lemieux, you're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everyone's going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I thought we'd play a little game. Um, um, uh, on our podcast, we, we, we do this thing where, uh, you know, and basically I was saying that there's a lot of jerks in the world and I truly believe that we need to start saying no to jerks. Yeah, I think not enough people in their lives have said no to them. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, you know, the guy who cuts in front of you in the line and usually nine times out of 10, you're just like, yeah, whatever. I'll just let him do it. Yeah, You don't need to fight no. with them. You don't no. need to yell at them. You just look straight in the eye. Back of the line, jerk. You know, like <laughs> kind of like a parenting figure vibe and just say no. Yeah, no. <laughs> not today. Not, not on my not watch. Happen. <laughs> so one of the things we, we like to do is we love to uh, check out, uh, you know, the weird or good news that are out there. And I found some interesting weird news. One of them is a worker uh, suspended for using a robot voice on the phone uh, via <laughs> New York Post. Hello. <laughs> Hi. You we're talking to the New York Post. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to get your, your, your thoughts on this. So he's a computer specialist, uh, Ronald Dillon. He's 66, who's 66. Uh, a city health department worker was slapped with a 20-day suspension without pay for speaking in a deliberately robotic fashion <laughs> while taking calls for a co-worker. <laughs> For entering the agency's help desk phone. So he was... You know he, that guy has the most boring job in the world if he's got to excite himself by like, hello, <laughs> I am a robot. Did people realize it? Were they like... Well, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> well but what happened was he was... He was that caught, was the game. That was the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was caught using the uh, monotone voice uh, at least five times uh, between February 2012 and April 2013. And Why I, don't you tell me what movie you'd like to see? So, he, you know, like, you have reached the help desk. 
this is Mr. Dylan. How may I help you? Was one of the things that they've oh heard him God. say in his, his robot impression. Uh, he did so well that one woman uh, wanted to demanded to speak to a human after she <laughs> thought an automated system uh, had hung up on her. <laughs> So and so, other callers that guy's my hero. filed formal complaints, and they tipped off the, his boss Barry Novak. And uh, Dylan told a judge at a discipline, disciplinary ear, hearing that he was simply reading from a script that his boss had asked him to follow. <laughs> Well, you know, they do have these scripts, and if you go off script, they yeah. get really upset oh, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I got a story about that, yeah. A friend of mine who does uh, customer service was saying, and he's a really friendly guy, he said he got, even though he was making sales, they said, no, no, stick to the script. Mm -hmm. So this guy said, okay, fine, you want the script, I'll give you the script. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so basically, he... I think his boss is a jerk, if you want to know. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. what I'm thinking. <laughs> so... He's my hero. <laughs> so so uh, Dylan, he has a thick Brooklyn accent. Oh, that's and even funnier. It's a Brooklyn robot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's caused him a lot of trouble in the past. So he was trying to speak slower. That's what he was saying. Oh. Uh, so that callers could understand him better. Plus, he added that he's not a people person. Um, but the judge didn't He's a buy robot person. Yeah. He didn't buy it, ruling that he appears to be dis a disgruntled employee. Um, who... The guy's 66. Yeah. Cut him some slack. Yeah. yeah. He's All not right. a hipster. He's... <laughs> All, All right. Hold that thought. It's 945. Let's go check out what's happening with traffic. This is Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Go, girl. Mm. Sing it up now. CJD 800. I'm your host, Shirley, with my man. Clove. Yes, we're... Um, sorry? Go ahead. I was just saying that we were just talking about, you know, trying to find out who or what is the jerk on it with this story about a worker suspended for using his using robot, voice. robot voice. Just to continue, uh, so Dylan uh, uh, basically, uh, yeah, he, he got in trouble, y'all, for talking like a robot. Well, he got fired, right? No, no, no? He, twenty day suspension. Ah, okay, okay. Um, so just to continue with that, Dylan's position involves uh, handling tech problems on two phone lines: one that deals with his fellow health department workers, and another one for members of the public mm -hmm. who are having trouble with the uh, with their website, I guess. Gotcha. So this whole suspension will cost him five thousand dollars in lost wages, and according to his lawyer William Macy, said that Dylan has been working there for the city since nineteen seventy six. Yeah, Aww. yeah. Uh, so with uh, and that's they, why he didn't get fired. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so he thought obviously this is a little too harsh of a punishment, and was very disappointed with the decision. Novak. Wait, twenty days with pay. 20 days without pay. Oh, okay. Yeah, 20 day suspension. So That's a month. Yeah, yeah. So he his... makes five grand in 20 days. That's pretty good. Yeah, I that know. That is right? pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good. That. Yeah. Hopefully, his lifestyle isn't beyond that because that, that's a lot of debt. Yeah, he's going to. Hopefully, he's good at saving money and he's got $5,000. Well, on he the is side. a robot, so he should be good at numbers. And he's a tech IT guy there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Novak, he, he says that uh, he was bullied. Dylan said that he was bullied by his boss and uh, that uh, his boss belittled him and refused to train him. So. Who or what is the jerk? Do you think it's Ronald? Hmm. Barry the boss? Hmm. Novak his boss? The city of health department? New York City health department? Mm -hmm. The call, the calling customers for confusing him as a robot? I think I'm team <laughs> I'm team Stephanie. I think I'm going to go with uh, the boss. I think so too. Here, yeah. I think so too. Mm -hmm. At first I thought me is this his plan for early retirement because that's not a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I what I'm thinking, I'm thinking the backstory to this, and I'm just gonna take a wild guess yeah. is that this new hotshot boss came in, right. right? And he's like, I got this script, okay? yeah, and this script is gonna sell so much, yeah. so much. And he was like, What? Well, he's not this trying to sell me, anything. This script makes me sound like a robot, and he's like, What? Just do the script, and he's like, Fine, I will do the script. 
<laughs> well, he's a 66 year old guy in an IT department. They must be like all in their 20s. And yeah. Like this old dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, I might feel bad for the guy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah and technology is moving is he so single? fast. I just thought that's all I want to know. <laughs> $5,000, oh, you say. Robots. We need robots. <laughs> Mom, moments. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I think, I think, obviously, I think he's there for knowledge. You know, he's getting close to retirement mm -hmm. and they just need him because he's the guy who's been there the longest and who knows the most. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking he's just done. He's, yeah, yeah I, I think he quit like five years ago and they're just too scared to like <laughs> to fire him. His wife won't let him. Mm. So he's like, oh, mm -hmm. he's married. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't it's know. Okay. Who knows. <laughs> don't get my hopes up, Shirley. <laughs> let's let's go on his Facebook and find out. Let's go Stalk him. him. <laughs> What's the phone number? I'll give him a call. Right. <laughs> I don't care. I'll do it. <laughs> So yeah, so we all agree. Barry Novak, his boss, is the is the uh, jerk. Agreed. In all this. Agreed. I've been dying to use this. Hold on. What? You. Who's what? the boss? <laughs> Barry Novak. Or who's the jerk? Barry Novak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so here's another one. Uh, let's see. Let's see who is or what is the jerk on this one. Uh, there, a uh, 51 year old drunk. And notorious troublemaker. You know what? I, I like him yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that guy won't be the jerk. <laughs> He's a notorious troublemaker. Andrew Davis uh, was given the antisocial behavior order after he took to lying on the road and faking injuries. Mm. All, to, all to do passing uh, motorists into calling him an ambulance. Now, he's done this before. Seeking a attention is his crime game, actually. That's his, his shtick. Right, that's his con game. That's yeah. his con yeah. game. And he was hauled back after before the courts. Um, uh, if he is caught lying on the ground anywhere in England or Wales... <laughs> so, so in the past, he began by pestering emergency services with prank calls mm -hmm. after being persuaded by police to give him, basically the police grabbed, said, you know what, give, give us your phone. This is ridiculous. You're going to stop this. So Davis decided to attract attention instead by wandering the streets near his home, uh, then, uh, then to fall all over and be injured in front of passerbys. And so that was his new new con began. And uh, his fed up neighbors eventually ignored his, his antics. And he took to busy, busy main roads because, you know, now he's not getting attention from the neighbors. They're like, OK, it's Andrew again. There he is trying to pretend to fall. <laughs> and uh, That's terrible, man, having that reputation. Right? Right. <laughs> You want to be the guy who yeah. says, hi, good yeah. morning. You really always have a smile on yeah. his face in the, in the neighborhood. Yeah, I really need some help here. Sure you do. Yeah, there sure you go, you laying yeah. on the... Oh, really, I'm roadkill, really. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. It's roadkill Andrew again. <laughs> roadkill Andrew. <laughs> RKA for short. Right. Mm -hmm. So he, again, he took to the, the busy main roads nearby and would lie on the ground That's pretending terrible. he had been hit by a car. So Davis was handed a two-year ASBO order, uh, which also prohibits him from being drunk in public places <laughs> and calling emergency services unless uh, there's a genuine emergency. Police Chief Chris Allman said, numerous motorists have done the decent thing and stopped to assist the man laying on the ground, not realizing that they were being duped. Uh, they would call an ambulance to attend to him, and the ambulance staff and paramedics would normally recognize David Davies. And they're like, "Oh, it's Andrew again." <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, now this is a guy who's single, oh, <laughs> for sure. He's trying his, to get well. You know, his to lie. He's lying on the ground. He's trying to get laid. Laid. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's not the way to do it. There and he's, yeah. yeah, it's not a good way to pick yeah. up the ladies. No, it's uh, terrible. Yeah, doing it wrong, roadkill. Doing you gotta it wrong. have a car at least. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not under the car. Just yeah. <laughs> so he was doing. Um, uh, so uh, on a number of occasions, he was taken to Stoke Mandeville Hospital. He's been offered support numerous. Uh, of time, you know, for agencies hmm. and given many opportunities to change his behavior. But Andrew, I guess, ob obviously turned it down. Mm -hmm. So who or what 
is the jerk in this? Do you think it's the police uh, officer? Roadkill uh, Andrew. Chris, <laughs> Roadkill Andrew. Yeah. yeah. The judge uh, in High Wycombe or the hospital? It's it's Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. What about the hospital? Couldn't they force him to just? They can't force him to like. Okay. No, because it doesn't matter what they do. He's just going to lay down on the ground. Yeah. It doesn't matter what happens. Yeah. As soon as nobody's looking, he's on the ground. You know what? That's I, his hustle. That's I his... think I say the jerk is his mom mm. <laughs> for not giving him enough attention. Oh, <laughs> poor mom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, mom. I don't know what you d- did not do, but he needed mm-hmm. a lot of attention. Some now hugs, he's trying yeah. to make up for it. All right. So before we sign out here. Yeah. So what's uh, here? The guest promotion? Show? Yes. Where? So we, where can we find you? So we can find you at Montreal Comedy Examiner. It's it's actually it's examiner dot com, okay. and I I do Montreal comedy. That's the category. Okay. And I'm going to be at Yakex this Tuesday at the open mic. That's great. Do yes. you have a, Do you have a Twitter or a uh, Facebook? I do. It's yeah. Comedy Montreal on Twitter. All nice. right. Nice. All right. Nice. And if you want to follow the Chonilla.com podcast Twitter, it's at Chonilla.dot.com. Yes, to get all the latest Chonilla. And you are, wonderful. Shirley? I am sh- at Shirasaurus. And I'm at Clovisaurus. So go check us out. Yes, definitely. All right. Um, <laughs> so other than that, other than Mr. Uh, Mr. Andrews, yes. what do we have coming up next? We have Andrew Searles. Andrew Searles is going to be in the building. Awesome. Yes, he'll be hanging out with us, and he'll let us know what's what the goings on. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have we'll play say no to the jerk with him as well. Okay, you know things like uh, you know things like uh, <laughs> the allegedly uh, forced fellatio on a victim. Nice. That's one of them. I like to him. He, that he, is an unsolved mystery yes. for Captain Kirk. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Or another one, a woman in Germany who squirted breast milk mm. in distraction theft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a breast robbery. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then we'll share, you know, one of the things that we do on the show, we love to share the beauty of interracial love since we're a chocolate and vanilla couple ourselves. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll we'll share some of that chonilla couple love, uh, Daria and Andre, who's right here from Montreal as well. And that's something we do regularly on the podcast as well as we celebrate Chanel Couples. See. Mm -hmm. And we'll uh, also see if we can give some advice, some love advice, possibly things, cool (laughs) things that we find uh, on the interweeb. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think after 21 years of uh, us being together, we might have a few things here and there. We're still learning ourselves. Is it weird that I keep saying 22 when you say 21? It's 21 years, honey. Yeah. Are yeah, you sure about that? I always give one plus. I don't know why. It just seems right. It just seems like for two years now we've been saying twenty one years. It's twenty one years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we'll, so we'll, it'll be fun. We'll have Andrew. But thanks so much for hanging oh, out. Oh, thank with you us. so much. I had a great time. Me too. Me too. I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, the time is ten o'clock, right here on CJD eight hundred. Open mic. Welcome back, You're everybody. to Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Welcome back, everybody, to Open Mic Night on CJAD 800 with... Uh, the Chonilla Podcast crew. My name is Clove. And I am Shirley. All right. We and... made it in the first hour. <laughs> We're at the halfway mark. <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> but we're excited to be here talking to mm-hmm. you. The uh, radio police haven't shut us down yet, so yes, that's good. Yes, CB has not sh- <laughs> shut us down. <laughs> that's his nickname, CB. CB? Yeah. Gotcha. That's what I'm, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's what I'll call the police. C to the B. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we, one of the things that we do, uh, is on our show, um, again, channel.com podcast, um, is that, uh, we love to share love stories cause they're just, it's cool to know how people meet particularly mm-hmm. interracial couples. Um, so one of the things we do is, uh, Chonilla couples where we 
showcase the beauty of IR love, swirl love. Mm -hmm. And one of them is Daria and Andre right here. Yes. And can I add to yes, that see. Montreal, yeah. what I've seen yeah. is an interracial relationship mecca. Yeah, I agree. There are so many interracial relationships here. It's it's not even funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. When we, we've moved around a lot. There's so many Chonilla babies running around here. Cute little it's Chonilla babies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we've moved around a lot. We lived in Toronto. Mm -hmm. We lived for for a good three years in Edmonton. We visited uh, Vancouver. Now, supposedly they say Vancouver has the highest in terms no. of interracial No, love. it is Montreal. Yes, a variety. No. The variety, I would say, is here. <laughs> I refuse those facts. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just, you know, before, I wanted to share a little bit uh, of Andre and Daria's story. So uh, Andre is from Moncton. New Brunswick, Darius from Toronto. They've been together by now at least four years. At mm -hmm. the time when the article was written on our site, it was three years. Um, they met on a patio uh, and after chatting via internet. Andre's first impression was she was way out of my league. <laughs> I, I'll read, uh, I'll read uh, Andre's parts. Okay, okay, Darius says, looks like his picture. <laughs> and uh, the responses from family and friends in regards of, uh, you know, being in interracial and dating, dating outside, outside their yeah. race. Andre was like, uh, it wasn't even acknowledged. It wasn't even a thing. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yay, Canada. <laughs> and Darius said, met with surprise and ske skepsi skepticism mm -hmm. by family and a couple of friends. Mm -hmm. But all were cool once everyone met him. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of similar to your story as well, right? Like the, because I, uh, I was the first white guy that you uh, dated, right? Okay. Um, it was, well, I And was, you had some friends who came at you like, what? Yeah. Okay. I was really nervous mm. <laughs> um, when you and I dated mm -hmm. because I, it's not something that my parents really talked about. So I know when I mention. Uh, to my parents, like, I don't think my, my thing, my dad was in Haiti. Yeah, he was. Right? Yeah, he and, was. And, uh, that's right. <laughs> and. Oh, uh, I remember that. I remember the day he true. came back. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, well, he came back because you and I, we, we moved really quickly yes, at the beginning did. of our relationship. Yes, we did. I think the first month we got together. Yeah, I could, moved. I could, Go ahead. You could guess on what I mean by that, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, which I never done that. And so, but after that, um, I think maybe it was less than a year. Mm -hmm. You were living, we we're still in high school. Yes, we're high school sweethearts. We That's where we met in high school. Mm -hmm. And um, and you had some issues with where you were living because you emancipated yourself from your parent, your family. Yeah, I got like kicked out. I got kicked out. You got kicked out of yeah. It. I went for two weeks on vacation in Detroit. Oh, you got kicked got out back, of the place because yeah. you you moved out of your parents. Yeah. You meant, like I said, you emancipated yourself. Yeah. From your parents, yeah. you got on student welfare, mm -hmm. and you found a place to live, which happens to be because you were working at like a daycare. Yes, I was at the time. Right. Wow, you have a good memory. And so the one of the moms mm -hmm. at that daycare had a. I she guess needed moved some, to a new place yeah. and then she had a basement apartment and yeah. you moved in there. Yeah, she would to work make the late. Story yeah. Short. And so 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 she kicked you out because you were saying you went on vacation. Mm -hmm. And then she told you you're out. Yeah, cuz because she had because her expectations of how I was going to watch the kids mm -hmm. was way different than what I was willing to do. You know what I mean? Like I was willing to pick the kids up, I was willing to bring them home, I was willing to cut open a can of uh, SpaghettiOs, a can of Alphagetti or something like that. But she wanted me to like to cook them dinner. Like she wanted me to cook like a legit dinner for these kids. And I was like, mm, not happening. Not because I don't want to. I can't cook. I'm going to poison your kids. What? So I didn't want to do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so you think that's why she kicked you out? Because well, of things like that? Because she knew she could get somebody in for more rent. Like she, it was a snap decision on her part, right? Like yeah. she was like, oh, I need somebody. I'm getting a new house. I got a basement. 
So I can make the, a little bit more money. Right. If he moves in, then, you know, I can have him watch the kids or whatever. And you know, was, that's not mm. my, th- it's never been my theory, right? Mm. My theory is, I think. She was on the prowl. She was on a prowl. <laughs> she was surprised that you had a girlfriend, mm-hmm. i.e. moi. A, a black girlfriend. L- mm. Let alone. Like, what? She was hella racist, too. Yeah, she would say yeah. weird things. And, like, this snide comment. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she thought that she would have a little boy toy. I personally think, but think you're so? like, oh, totally. Yeah. I say 200%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think she <laughs> thought that she would have a little boy toy and she realized, oh, how do I mm-hmm. maneuver for him to do that? But, you know, as soon as she found somebody that was willing to do what she needed and I was gone for two weeks, she yeah. packed up all my stuff and she said, you got to go. Because she, <laughs> uh, she rented the place out to me, not as like a landlord, but as like a boarder. Do you know what I mean? So, so there was no lease. There was no yeah. nothing that I'd signed. There's no legal attachment. So she yeah. could just kick me she out any time. She could kick you out any time. Yeah. And that's when I was like, Shirley, can I move into your place? Right. And you're like, hell no. I'm Haitian. <laughs> Are you crazy? People in Haiti don't do that. <laughs> in our community, the whole the island of Haiti is going to know about this news. <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, there's no way. And you're like, please, please. I really don't mm-hmm. want to move back. Mm-hmm. And, and so, so, so I finally asked my mom and you gave her your life story. She cried. She said, you're not going anywhere. You're staying right here. Mm. And so she, I didn't know she cried. Like when you, when you've said this before, yeah, you've mentioned that she's cried. Yeah. And, and I'll I remember when I, it. when I talked to her afterwards, she was just like, no, you need a lot of food. You need to eat some food. Yeah. You know what I mean? So here, eat it's some Haitian food. way. You got to. <laughs> when a Haitian person tells you you got to eat, mm-hmm. don't say no thank you. Just do it. Just save yeah. yourself some time. Yeah, they, they know better and right. they know you need some food. Yeah. <laughs> so she, so she, um, <laughs> so she then said to, uh, where was I? Well, oh, before, yeah. Before, so she told my okay. dad. Yeah. And then my dad was like, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. And that's what made him come around very uh, quickly. All right. It is 10 15 and. Okay. No, no all right. we, we can keep going. We can <laughs> gotcha. keep going. Okay. Um, Go ahead, Shirley. And so, anyway, uh, just to. <laughs> you know what? Just to kind of. Anyway, yeah. I was saying my dad, that's when he came back. Um, and that's when he said to me, well, at least he's not Haitian. Mm-hmm. I'm like, really? <laughs> no, it was at least he's not Jamaican. Oh, gosh. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, uh, it's uh, what time is it? It is 10, 15 p.m. Yes. And uh, we'll be right back right here on CJAD 800. This is Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Back CJD eight hundred with your girl Shirley and boy Clove at Clovisaurus on Twitter and I'm at Shirasaurus Shirasaurus I can't talk it's anymore. It's a mouthful, eh? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter as well. I'm at Shirasaurus. You know, we were talking. Uh, you know, we went off the tangent as we usually do, talking about. That's why we do a podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> about our past, and then we did finish about the lovely. Chonilla couple, Daria uh-huh. and Andre. So uh-huh. I just I just wanted to, uh, on the funny side, because I thought it was funny, one of the things we like to ask the couples is, what stereotypes have you found to be true? Mm. And Andre said... Oh, I got to okay, scroll I'll back say up. Oh, go ahead. Fried chicken, the famous, <laughs> and the famous black woman attitude. <laughs> That's kind of hot, though. That it, attitude is kind of hot. You do? You like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure and then we have uh, then Daria said post post seasoning meat when cooking versus pre-seasoning <laughs> yeah y'all don't season <laughs> sure we do it's called uh, HP sauce yeah. it's not enough man <laughs> it's not enough <laughs> uh, so that's our show couple you could read more of their story uh, chonilla.com and if you click on couples you'll see all the beautiful swirl couples that are sharing their lovely love stories but uh, and we also have a form if you are in an interracial relationship and you'd like us to celebrate it then you know let us know check out the form yes for sure for sure um, we have another guest. Oh, yeah. One of the fastest rising stand-up comedian. <laughs> the funniest guy I know. Yes, actor. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the Montreal scene, a favorite at the colleges and universities in MTL, but also takes the stage at the comedy clubs from Montreal, Vancouver, all over Canada. Amazing audiences along the way uh, while discussing topics from his childhood to life in school to romance to his ethnic background of growing up in, in Canada. And oh, by the way, if there's a single lady listening right now. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> He's single, yo. <laughs> he has a, devil a devilish smile. He's very fertile. Yes, I said it. And uh, and he would breed some strong Amazonian churins. Uh, that means children, just so you know. That is very true. <laughs> <laughs> Let's welcome Andrew Searles. Woo! Speak for me, Mario. <laughs> How you been, man? I've been good, man. Busy. Just been. I've been on the road a lot. Then mm -hmm. I actually just got back in town uh, late Thursday night. Right, right. So I was on the road. I did. I had a week in, in Ottawa and I had a week in Toronto for shows. And uh, now I'm back here. Is yeah. that the uh, Underground Railroad comedy tour? Not yet. Oh, not yet. Not yet. That's in uh, February. Right, right on. This was just uh, just doing Absolute Comedy, which mm -hmm. is like the club in Ottawa, and then they have another one in Toronto. I wanted to ask you about that last Underground uh, Railroad yes, comedy tour. Yes, we had a chance tour. to check it out. Yeah, it was awesome, oh, and I wanted true. to know the, the lineup that you had. Like, how many of those guys were local? Um, actually, no. Only me and Rodney, actually, were the only local guys wow. doing the, mm -hmm. the full length of the tour. And then we have three other people, like Keisha Brownie, Danny Woodrow, and Patrick Hay. They were from Toronto. And then we were just kind of... Uh, when we do the shows in like either Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, we would just send these guys around with us. Mm -hmm. And then when we went out west, it was just me and Rodney oh, doing okay. the whole tour. Oh, okay. And then we would pick up the local comics along the way. Oh, right on. cool. Yeah. Right on. That's that's cool, but I mean it's it was amazing, and we had you on our show Chonilla, and that, that's why because I thought, hey, there's nothing like this before, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I remember in Toronto, uh, Yuck Yucks, you'd have Black Sun, you know, the Black comics that were coming from BET oh, yeah, and stuff Nubian like that show, yeah, on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, the Nubian show on that's Sunday. That's what it's called, the Nubian show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, some places sometimes it's called Chocolate Sundays. Chocolate Sundays. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have that in LA, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The comic <laughs> there. When I heard that, I was like, Chocolate Sundays. I was like, oh man. <laughs> I don't know if I should be a proud or ashamed. <laughs> it's, it's either two steps forward or two steps back. I don't know what it is. Can I, I sprinkle know. it with my nuts? That's what I want to know. No. Uh, so I thought it was a cool because, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't know who black Canadian comedians that are out here mm -hmm. doing their thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that's one of the reasons why we did the tour. Be simply because when you think of black comedy, we always think of like your Eddie Murphy, your Bill Cosby, mm -hmm. but like in terms of Canadians. It's like there's no one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no one comes to mind. And the the crowd was very eclectic. Oh yeah, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Was and amazing. like yeah, the crowd we would have is just a wide diversity. It was not just uh, a black audience, but it was like it'd be white or Asian or, mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, like it was always a good mix. So it was good to see that our message was um, of of what we're doing was being spread across a wide range mm -hmm. of, of demographics, which is I think is really good. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sure. people want to hear about it. People want to hear about. Uh, uh, different backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. like we were kind of tired over the years of hearing the exact same voice from the same background. Mm -hmm. People want to hear about uh, different voices and different backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For different sure. experiences, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had a question for you. Um, the first black Roman emperor. Um, <laughs> what? Is, uh, is his name pronounced Tyrone or Thyrone? Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh! Okay, so here's the story to that. I, <laughs> so I, I, as I said before, I got back in town Thursday night, and a buddy of mine, Curtis, he had a, a birth, uh, a Halloween party last night. So he's like, "Oh, you gotta come down." I'm like, "I just got back in town. I don't have time to go shopping for like a Halloween costume." And he's like, "Oh, I have a toga." outfit so i was like all right i'll go i've never done toga before let me do this yeah i gotta work with this now yeah exactly i'm like i can make I can, I can make anything look good so i get to this house and uh he has a toga thing so he puts a toga on and he has his armband and this this piece is supposed to go around your arm but i was like no nah, i want to put it on my head like and like caesar he has that, those leaves on, yeah, his, yeah, on his head yeah, yeah. the laurel leaves or whatever they're called yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so i ended up putting that on my head and I just walk here out and people are like who are you and i'm like yo i'm tyrone the first <laughs> The first black Roman Empire. <laughs> the Nubian Empire. Exactly, Nubian Empire. Yeah. It's like, really, what was he in charge of? <laughs> the Nubians. He, he was the only emperor that had gold rims on his chariot. Right. Yes, yes. Everybody else had, like, gold scepters yes. and gold trophies. Yeah. The horses had grills. The yeah. 
<laughs> horse grills, as we call them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and other and other than comedy, you've been, you know, doing some acting. Yeah, it's been uh, been filming a couple commercials over the past while. Yeah. I did uh, cool. I did a commercial for Moore's Suits, and uh, I did a commercial for um, uh, Great Wolf Lodge. Actually, not long ago, about a year ago. Uh, I did a. I actually did a promo for uh, Lotto Quebec for their uh, Trois Rivières casino. Oh, oh. Yeah, I didn't even know there's a casino in Trois Rivières. <laughs> but I get there, and then it's just like, like it's basically it's one of those promo shots where it's like, oh, here's a group of people around the blackjack table, and here's a group of people around the roulette table. Right. And I'm the only one guy there, so I'm just like, yeah, I'm representing the one black guy that lives in <laughs> Trois Rivières. <laughs> Only because his car broke down. He's just like, I can't get back to Montreal. Let me just live here. They, they, <laughs> exactly. they just want the Three Rivers people to expect black people when they go to the casino. Just, exactly. Just yeah. so you know, there's going to be some black people here. Yeah. My idea of Three Rivers, though, every time I hear it, mm -hmm. is the last time I went, it was because of this huge church that's there. And mm -hmm. There are nuns and everything. It's supposed to be like this big place. So when I think that, I think like, oh, Three Rivers, nuns and... My oh, memory, right. my memory of Three Rivers, Quebec, is uh, my grandfather. He had a red house, like a red bungalow house out there, and he had a huge forest in the back. And we would just go there and just like go on these like little, you know, like your cousins, you know what I mean? And you go on these little adventures in the forest and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, that's 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 my memory. Of Three really? Rivers, yeah. My memory of Trois Rivières is driving past Trois Rivières. <laughs> <laughs> is there really Three Rivers here? <laughs> yeah. I don't have time to count. I got to keep going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got it back to Montreal. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things, uh, uh, and we did it earlier with Stephanie, I thought it'd be fun to do, is uh, saying, let's find out who or or what to say no to a jerk to. Mm, oh, okay. Right. Maybe Oct Octoprod might want to join us on this. Octoprod looks like <laughs> he's just too busy. I don't oh, yeah. know. <laughs> uh, so, so here's the first one. Megan Holting allegedly tries to force fellatio on a victim. Mm. This Texas woman who has uh, already three runs with the police in the past. She was busted for theft, and then two days later, she was busted for uh, assault. Rape? No, <laughs> no, yeah, no well, rape? The rape is later. Oh, okay. You know, it's things, you got to do things in order. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on October 21st, she was into, intoxi intoxicated in public. So she broke into her husband's friend's house on Monday. <laughs> And Megan, 31, is charged with felony burglar burglary with the intent of committing a sex sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Once inside the property, Holting, who was wearing a nightgown, went into the man's bedroom where he was sleeping <laughs> and started fondling the man's genitals and attempted to perform fellatio upon him. He, he told the uh, county sheriff... Uh, deputy that he awoke to the feeling of an unknown party on top of him, adding that he felt the fender place his penis in her mouth, mm. aided by a flashlight on his cell phone. So he turned on, you know, your little phone. He's like, what's going on? Yeah, what's happening This here? feels great. What? <laughs> <laughs> and the victim recognized that it was his friend's wife. Oh, boy. Wow. Whose breasts were exposed. Mm. And uh, so he directed to ask her to leave, but she wouldn't. And that's why and that's when he called 911. Um, and during the questioning, Holting reportedly admitted uh, getting into the victim's bed where she kissed him and wrapped her legs around his weight, his waist. All right. Before we continue, it is uh, 1030. And uh, let's take a quick break. You're listening to Open Mic Night on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. She's running from the laughter. Run away from the pain. I love this song. Every time he goes, CJAD 800, welcome back to Open Mic Night with me, Shirley and Clue. Yay, what's up, everybody? My ma'am. <laughs> and uh, also with Andrew. Mr. Searles. What up? <laughs> in the house yes <laughs> black roman emperor tyrone tyrone <laughs> yes so we were just talking about uh who or what to say no to a jerk to and this megan holting allegedly tries to force fellatio on her mm. man's best friend who's the mm -hmm. victim poor guy mm. um, victim quote unquote right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right rape is not funny yeah, yeah that's true that's true um <laughs> so uh so do you think megan is the jerk in this her husband 
Her mm. husband's friend, I mean. Her mm-hmm. husband. Poor guy. Uh, uh, blame it on the alcohol, mm. you think? Or the uh, Williamson County Police for not understanding that she, you know, maybe thought he was real hot mm. and wanted to do something about it. So she should just lay her hands on him and try and, you know. And climb the fence and right. through the gate. And, and that's her friend's man, too, right? Her friend's man. Yeah, I know. She's the jerk. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think, Andrew? Uh, this girl's name is Megan, right? Yeah. First of all, Megan needs Jesus. That's what this girl needs. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> Jesus. This, this girl is going to need all the holy water we can get. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as for the uh, as for the guy, uh, when uh, when he woke up and found her there. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to hear that 911 call. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, a little bit to the left. <laughs> Hello, police. Wait, hold on. I, I think there's like a two strike. Like I think if she's there and then she's trying to like force herself, I would say you have you ask twice and then it's okay. Right, <laughs> right. She's like we shouldn't. She's like no, I really want to. I'm like you sure? Yeah. I that's cool. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, he should get the uh, good to go app, right? Yeah, the good to go app. You can, have a you know, consent. Hey, it's consensual. Yeah, it's consensual. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's yeah. on Facebook. It's for real. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like relationships. Like you guys dating? Like no, I'm like no, no. It's got to be on Facebook, yeah. and then you guys are dating. Yeah, you, yeah. Better, you better change your status. It's complicated. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But you know what I was thinking? I was like, how does how did this get to happen? So I'm thinking there was probably a party that her and her husband was hosting. Mm. And obviously she got, you know, drunk. And Is this, she got drunk before or after she put her keys in the fishbowl. <laughs> <laughs> you way before that. Way before. Yeah, she was know? the only one who did it too. She just yeah. threw him in a bowl and said, "All right, everybody." Yeah. Everybody's looking at her like you're crazy. Because fishbowl parties My are kids ner- are here. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're not hot. What are you doing? Yeah, because fishbowl parties are nerve wracking. So you need to have a little drink to kind of you know, yeah, calm your nerves. Yeah. Are you speaking yeah. from experience, Charlie? No, I have no idea. I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. If I were to be at a fishbowl party, yeah, I'd be a little bit nervous. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You know, and got to perform. And, you know, mm-hmm. I've never been to a fishbowl party. I think Me it's neither. on my to do list in my life. <laughs> <laughs> For real. When it, when an Oscar go to a fishbowl party? That's yeah. My... <laughs> yeah. There you go. So I'm thinking she got drunk and then she just kept looking at her her husband's best friend. Thought he was really really hot. Mm. Flirting with him. Was she not... decided that guy's junk is going to be in her mouth yeah. by the end of the night. Yeah. She's like, that's it. Yeah. The alcohol decided for yeah. her. She's like, let's make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, okay, well, by any means. No, it's not even let's make this happen. It's like, I'm making this happen. Right. Yeah. 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 Wait till he falls Nobody asleep. holding me back. Right. Yeah. Can't yeah. stop, won't stop. <laughs> What's that from again? That's some rap song. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she listened to when she was on her way over. That's right. <laughs> that was getting her all pumped up, right? Exactly. Like, yes. yeah. As she's breaking the house, can't stop, won't stop. Nah. Jury rigs a lot. <laughs> Rockefeller records. <laughs> so, yeah, so we all agree, Megan, you're wrong on this. You're mm. jerk. Somebody should have well, obviously, her, your man's best friend or whoever that is. Such a jerk. Said no on this one. Uh, Megan the jerk. Yeah. Here's another one. A woman in Germany squirted breast milk in distraction <laughs> theft. What? Yep. Can we say this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Breast milk. <laughs> breast is his milk. Uh, it's, it's, it's technical. CB's head is exploding right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so this woman... Um, uh, basically, she, from what I gathered from the story, <laughs> uh, she went into a pharmacy and uh, basically stole her. Basically, she tried to distract the uh, the pharmacist because she, her goal was trying to get some money. Mm-hmm. And, and for her to distract the pharmacist and this whole thing is by, you know, mm-hmm. squirting the best breast milk like a uh, like, uh, gun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, Um, (laughs) that's so funny that she like she has to have some kind of projectile ability. Yeah. Right. Like she's got to be able to like she's got to have technique. Right. To be able to aim and like like she must have practiced. Do all do women practice with their breast milk? Like like there's a like they paint a target in the room. (laughs) I tried. (laughs) They hold the baby away two feet. I it's like a gun can, range. Yeah. <laughs> I think it can work. Well, I guess I don't know. I've tried. It takes. It's. It is. There is a technique to it. Okay. 
Um, obviously, she's got her technique down because mm. she's using that as a as a weapon. As a weapon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you can you can like catch STIs from that, right? I mean, it's it's no joke, right? Like, can there's you? STIs in breast milk, right? I have no idea. Can you? I don't know. Oh, I, I gotta go get somewhere. checked now. Octoprod. <laughs> <laughs> Because you see what happened at the last yeah. fishbowl party. The one, the <laughs> one <laughs> safe zone I had. <laughs> Octoprod, do you think people uh, breast milk STDs? Is that possible? STIs. St- STIs. Yes. STDs. Yeah, okay. we live in the 21st century. It's no longer diseases; they're infections. People. That's right. Um, I, don't, I don't. I'll like. I. I uh, you sounds, know what? We'll, we'll, that sounds scientifically plausible. Let's put it that way. <laughs> we'll have to Google it on the Google machine. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, continue. Well, I had a, I have a, a, a uh, <laughs> she's writing her name in the snow. <laughs> I have a video on this actually uh, uh, on what exactly happened with this German woman and her amazing guns. Get it, guns? <laughs> I see what you did there. I, I tried. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see what uh, on uh, Jillian on Buzz sixty will explain the details. To police in central Germany, a woman walked into a pharmacy and asked to buy a breast pump. The pump only cost about $25, but the woman handed over $250. That's when, again, according to police, she lifted her shirt and started squeezing breast milk at the pharmacist. What? Apparently, she made a mess of the register and ran over to a second register to do some more rummaging. German papers are saying the pharmacy employees asked her to please cover up and stop making a mess, but the woman ignored them and once again sprayed her breast milk at them. After the second round, she ran out, and the pharmacist noticed about $127 missing from the register. Police describe the woman as robust and say they are still looking for her. Officers also said her behavior was almost unbelievable. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. As the internet would say, picks or it didn't happen. But 60, now you know, pass it on. Wait a second. Wait a second. (laughs) She she paid 10 times more than what the pump was worth. Yeah. And then took $127 from the register? Yeah. So she's down like a hundred and thirteen dollars. Cocaine is a hell of a wow. job, man. <laughs> so she actually she actually lost money on this yeah, thing. Yeah. I guess you could say she wasn't abreast of the situation. <laughs> mm, mm. Yeah! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh no. I see what you did there. I see what you did. Boom, there. yeah. <laughs> I went to school. <laughs> I know all about these jokes. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think she's clearly like not of sound mind. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I, I have a hard time saying that she's the jerk. Really? <laughs> yeah, I do. Cause she's crazy. She's she's yeah, in the red. Yeah. <laughs> she's crazy. She's in the red. She leaves, and she she's paid for whatever she's even the damages she's paid for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So I was. I say even Stephen, it's a draw. Nobody's a jerk. Nobody's a jerk? No. Not the pharmacist? No. Not her breast assist no. itself? That would just be a great story to tell when you get home. Yeah. This lady came into the pharmacy. She just whipped them both out. Oh, my God. It was spraying everywhere. I took a selfie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole thing? Mm. Mm. What do you think, Shirley? Uh, I'm going with the breast assist. Because mm. sometimes when they're full, especially breast milk. Oh they can my. be jerks, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, they're like, you know what? I'm going to start leaking right here. Yeah. Yeah. It happened to me at a wedding. Yeah, I Not that. fun. No. We had to leave early. Yeah. I didn't know how to squirt like Miss Germany Breast milk Germany can lady. shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they can, it, they can get in the way. <laughs> It, so her I think that's what happened. It got in the, the way. Okay. And she didn't, you know, she, that's all she was focusing on is how do I get rid of this milk? Yeah. Because I she was. She wasn't aiming it anywhere in particular. She was just like, get this out of here. Her me. plan was different in terms of get, grabbing the money, but her breast got in her way. Gotcha. And so she resorted to squirting. Yep. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, then boy. she went home to her best friend's husband. <laughs> mm. Tried to force some rape on him, right? Mm. So, so we, so there's no one who's a jerk in this one, I guess. Uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, you, know, you could have your opinion. I, I mean, breasts. Yeah, the breasts are a jerk. So, what about I'll you, go with Andrew? That. Uh, I you can't you can't hold a breast 
<laughs> they can't I didn't, even, be I, didn't, I, can't, I didn't even know where to go with that. I didn't even know. He's I like, can't. What's happening? Did, yeah, it's a, it's a breast. I mean, to men, they can never be jerks. You can't. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm a guy. I can't. I can't hold them accountable. <laughs> all right, <laughs> fellas, I got you. Yeah. So I'm sure all the guys at the pharmacy were just like, you know, open a bag of chips and start watching the show, and all the girls were like, "This is disgusting. This is right. gross." Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. It is 10.45 p.m. CJAD 800.